July 12th, Daily Video Bible Reading from the Net Bible, 2 Chronicles chapters 29 and 30 from the Old Testament. Hezekiah was 25 years old when he began to reign. He reigned 29 years in Jerusalem. His mother was Abijah, the daughter of Zechariah. He did what the Lord approved, just as his ancestor David had done. In the first month of the first year of his reign, he opened the doors of the Lord's temple and repaired them. He brought in the priests and Levites and assembled them in the square on the east side. He said to them, Listen to me, you Levites. Now consecrate yourselves, so you can consecrate the temple of the Lord God of your ancestors. Remove from the sanctuary what is ceremonially unclean. For our fathers were unfaithful. They did what is evil in the sight of the Lord our God and abandoned him. They turned away from the Lord's dwelling place and rejected him. They closed the doors of the temple porch and put out the lamps. They did not offer incense or burnt sacrifices in the sanctuary of the God of Israel. The Lord was angry at Judah and Jerusalem and made them an appalling object of horror at which people hiss out their scorn, as you can see with your own eyes. Look, our fathers died violently, and our sons, daughters, and wives were carried off because of this. Now I intend to make a covenant with the Lord God of Israel, so that he may relent from his raging anger. My sons, do not be negligent now, for the Lord has chosen you to serve in his presence, and offer sacrifices. The following Levites prepared to carry out the king's orders. From the Kohathites, Mahath, son of Amasai, and Joel, son of Azariah. From the Mirarites, Kish, son of Abdi, and Azariah, son of Jehalalel. From the Gershonites, Joah, son of Zima, and Eden, son of Joah. From the descendants of Elizaphan, Shimri, and Jael. From the descendants of Asaph, Zechariah, and Mataniah. From the descendants of Heman, Jehiel, and Shimei. From the descendants of Judathun, Shemaiah, and Uziel. They assembled their brothers and consecrated themselves. Then they went in to purify the Lord's temple, just as the king had ordered in accordance with the word of the Lord. The priests then entered the Lord's temple to purify it. They brought out to the courtyard of the Lord's temple every ceremonially unclean thing they discovered inside. The Levites took them out to the Kidron Valley. On the first day of the first month, they began consecrating. By the eighth day of the month, they reached the porch of the Lord's temple. For eight more days they consecrated the Lord's temple. On the sixteenth day of the first month they were finished. They went to King Hezekiah and said, We have purified the entire temple of the Lord, including the altar of burnt sacrifice and all its equipment, and the table for the bread of the presence and all its equipment. We have prepared and consecrated all the items that King Ahaz removed during his reign when he acted unfaithfully. They are in front of the altar of the Lord. Early the next morning, King Hezekiah assembled the city officials and went up to the Lord's temple. They brought seven bulls, seven rams, seven lambs, and seven goats as a sin offering for the kingdom, the sanctuary, and Judah. The king told the priests, the descendants of Aaron, to offer burnt sacrifices on the altar of the Lord. They slaughtered the bulls, and the priests took the blood and splashed it on the altar. Then they slaughtered the rams and splashed the blood on the altar. Next they slaughtered the lambs and splashed the blood on the altar. Finally, they brought the goats for the sin offering before the king and the assembly, and they placed their hands on them. Then the priests slaughtered them. They offered their blood as a sin offering on the altar to make atonement for all Israel because the king had decreed that the burnt sacrifice and sin offering were for all Israel. King Hezekiah stationed the Levites in the Lord's temple with cymbals and stringed instruments, 
just as David, Gad, the king's prophet, and Nathan, the prophet, had ordered. The Lord had actually given these orders through his prophets. The Levites had David's musical instruments, and the priest had trumpets. Hezekiah ordered the burnt sacrifice to be offered on the altar. As they began to offer the sacrifice, they also began to sing to the Lord, accompanied by the trumpets and the musical instruments of King David of Israel. The entire assembly worshipped as the singers sang and the trumpeters played. They continued until the burnt sacrifice was completed. When the sacrifices were completed, the king and all who were with him bowed down and worshipped. King Hezekiah and the officials told the Levites to praise the Lord, using the Psalms of David and Asaph the prophet. So they joyfully offered praise and bowed down and worshipped. Hezekiah said, Now you have consecrated yourselves to the Lord. Come and bring sacrifices and thank offerings to the Lord's temple. So the assembly brought sacrifices and thank offerings, and whoever desired to do so brought burnt sacrifices. The assembly brought a total of 70 bulls, 100 rams, and 200 lambs as burnt sacrifices to the Lord, and 600 bulls and 3,000 sheep were consecrated. But there were not enough priests to skin all the animals, so their brothers, the Levites, helped them until the work was finished, and the priests could consecrate themselves. The Levites had been more conscientious about consecrating themselves than the priest. There was a large number of burnt sacrifices, as well as fat from the peace offerings and drink offerings that accompanied the burnt offerings. So the service of the Lord's temple was reinstituted. Hezekiah and all the people were happy about what God had done for them, for it had been done quickly. Hezekiah sent messages throughout Israel and Judah. He even wrote letters to Ephraim and Manasseh, summoning them to come to the Lord's temple in Jerusalem and observe a Passover celebration for the Lord God of Israel. The king, his officials, and the entire assembly in Jerusalem decided to observe the Passover in the second month. They were unable to observe it at the regular time because not enough priests had consecrated themselves and the people had not assembled in Jerusalem. The proposal seemed appropriate to the king and the entire assembly. So they sent an edict throughout Israel from Beersheba to Dan, summoning the people to come and observe a Passover for the Lord God of Israel in Jerusalem, for they had not observed it on a nationwide scale as prescribed in the law. Messengers delivered the letters from the king and his officials throughout Israel and Judah. The royal edict read, O Israelites, return to the Lord God of Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, so he may return to you who have been spared from the kings of Assyria. Don't be like your fathers and brothers who were unfaithful to the Lord God of their ancestors, provoking him to destroy them, as you can see. Now don't be stubborn like your fathers. Submit to the Lord and come to his sanctuary, which he has permanently consecrated. Serve the Lord your God so that he might relent from his raging anger. For if you return to the Lord... Your brothers and sons will be shown mercy by their captors and return to this land. The Lord your God is merciful and compassionate. He will not reject you if you return to him. The messengers journeyed from city to city through the land of Ephraim and Manasseh as far as Zebulun. But people mocked and ridiculed them. But some men from Asher, Manasseh, and Zebulun humbled themselves and came to Jerusalem. In Judah, God moved the people to unite and carry out the edict the king and the officers had issued at the Lord's command. A huge crowd assembled in Jerusalem to observe the Feast of Unleavened Bread in the second month. They removed the altars in Jerusalem. They also removed all the incense altars and threw them into the Kidron Valley. They slaughtered the Passover lamb on the 14th day of the second month. The priests and Levites were ashamed. So they consecrated themselves and brought burnt sacrifices to the Lord's temple. They stood at their post according to the regulations outlined in the law of Moses, the man of God. The priests were splashing the blood as the Levites handed it to them. 
because many in the assembly had not consecrated themselves, the Levites slaughtered the Passover lambs of all who were ceremonially unclean and could not consecrate their sacrifice to the Lord. The majority of the many people from Ephraim, Manasseh, Issachar, and Zebulun were ceremonially unclean, yet they ate the Passover in violation of what is prescribed in the law. For Hezekiah prayed for them, saying, May the Lord who is good forgive everyone who is determined to follow God, the Lord God of his ancestors, even if he is not ceremonially clean according to the standards of the temple. The Lord responded favorably to Hezekiah and forgave the people. The Israelites who were in Jerusalem observed the Feast of Unleavened Bread for seven days with great joy. The Levites and priests were praising the Lord every day with all their might. Hezekiah expressed his appreciation to all the Levites, who demonstrated great skill in serving the Lord. They feasted for the seven days of the festival and were making peace offerings and giving thanks to the Lord God of their ancestors. The entire assembly then decided to celebrate for seven more days, so they joyfully celebrated for seven more days. King Hezekiah of Judah supplied 1,000 bowls and 7,000 sheep for the assembly, while the officials supplied them with 1,000 bulls and 10,000 sheep. Many priests consecrated themselves. The celebration included the entire assembly of Judah, the priests, the Levites, the entire assembly of those who came from Israel, the resident foreigners who came from the land of Israel, and the residents of Judah. There was a great celebration in Jerusalem, unlike anything that had occurred in Jerusalem since the time of King Solomon, son of David of Israel. The priests and Levites got up and pronounced blessings on the people. The Lord responded favorably to them as their prayers reached his holy dwelling place in heaven. God, this is just another uh, set of chapters that talks about how you really look at how our heart is, the direction our heart is pointed at, um, and not just how we're acting on Sunday or in front of other people, but you actually see what the truth of our heart is because you made it. So it's just an amazing passage where here these people come and participate in Passover and they're, they're participating for all the right reasons. They love you. They want to be uh, together with their brothers and sisters. Um, they want to worship and glorify you. They want to ask for forgiveness. There's, there's all these pure sentiments. And yet they're ceremonially unclean. They didn't go through some of the, the processes, the steps, in order to be able to participate in Passover. And I, and I have friends who are Jewish and there's... <laughs> There's so many rules and regulations and processes to, to get to a point that sometimes it seems like those become more important than somebody's heart. And yet here it is, Hezekiah is praying for them and says, may the Lord who is good, may the Lord who is good and wise and understanding and who has made your, your good hearts, forgive everyone who is determined to follow God, the Lord God of his ancestors, even if he's not clean, according to the standards of the temple. So even though, even though you're not doing what you're supposed to, according to the worldly peace, those steps to follow as, as a man of God at that time, but their hearts are following you. They're doing everything for the wrong reasons. They may not be doing the right steps, but for all the right reasons. And God, I think about our, our world today. We don't get all the steps right. We don't get on our knees in front of you and confess our sins and ask you to help change our hearts so that we can start to live the lives you, you want us to. And then every day specifically ask for that relationship to grow so that we can continue to do your will and we can love other people like you love people and, and we can tell other people about you. We get those things all mixed up. I mean, ideally, there is a process for us, just like there was a process for being clean back in the temple. But if we go into the relationship with a, a, 
pure and truthful heart that we truly are repentant of our sins. Um, we truly want to change our lives. We truly want a relationship with you, God. We want to fall madly in love with you. If our intentions are true, I know that you go, gosh, what your heart is seeking is so much bigger, so much more important than doing the steps in the right order or saying the right words or doing it in the right place, which was a big thing in the Old Testament time. And I think some people get hung up on this, that there's a certain way to be saved. You have to say certain words or you have to come down to the front of the church. Um, and there's no place in the Bible you say that. You say you want to have a relationship with us, that you love us. You love us in ways that we don't even understand. And there, there's no relationships that are the same. Um, we know some of the components of relationships, like communication and time getting to know each other and uh, similar interests and different things like that. But none of us have done a relationship in the exact same way every single time. God, I just, I just pray for the people who are held back thinking that there, there has to be something specific here, a specific step, a specific rule or set of rules that they have to follow in order to be your child, in order to follow you uh, the rest of their life, in order to do your will. There's nothing like that. There's just them and you and their heart and, and you reaching out with your hands just filled with this amazing gift and them in purity and truth accepting that gift. God, tear down all those walls and those processes and those rules and those words that, that we get so tied into that we truly forget that you care about our heart and the direction it's set on. You care about what our life looks like, not just in front of other people, but all the time. You care about the relationship that we have with you and how we handle that and how we deal with it and how we seek you, God. Thank you for listening to Hezekiah's prayer back then and thank you for listening to our prayer today that we may not get everything exactly right and crossing T's and dotting I's, but if we come to you with sincerity and a desire of repentance and, and uh, asking for forgiveness and wanting to follow you, God, that you'll not only allow that, but you'll walk with us down that path. In your son's name I pray. Amen.